Okay, back on here again. Uh, want to let everybody know hadn't hadn't posted any videos in a while there. Uh, some health problems crop up and kind of sent me for a loop there. So haven't had a whole lot going on in the last little bit. Uh, and they changed my medication and making it uh, extremely hard to uh, to work very long at the time. So anyhow, we'll get work through all that. And uh, working on a project here now, it's a, a little small table. It's gonna be a, I guess you'd call it an eating table. It'd be a couple of people sit down and eat at it, but it's gonna be uh, just, just big enough for a couple of people. And it's on a, uh, it'll have a, uh, a, a three-leg base with a center post. It's a round table. So anyway, anyway, uh, uh, right here, they, they wanted it, uh, they wanted some uh, certain things on it. So this is one of the, uh, the legs that they, the design of the legs that they wanted on it. So uh, this, this is not the actual leg. This is what I use for a pattern. It was on a, uh, it was on another table and I think it was maple and it's been stained and it's quite old and uh, never get the stain off and make it look anything. Anyhow, the new table is going to be made out of walnut, so I took and uh, I've made some new legs uh, and these are made out of walnut. Uh, and I, I, sorry I didn't go through the process of making these things, just it took me a while and I certainly just didn't feel up to video and everything that I did. And, and then it was uh, chopped up and through so different many days. And, but like I said, I'm only able to work a little bit at the time. Seems like uh, uh, I'm getting kind of used to my medicine now, so maybe it'll, maybe it'll improve. But anyway, it's uh, it's basically just a leg. I just followed the pattern on the one that was existing and, uh, and cut out the shape. Uh, of course, the, uh, the trim here, we just used a, uh, I used a quarter inch beading bit around here, uh, and then the rosettes in it. Uh, I've got a video online there already on YouTube that uh, shows me uh, setting up my cutter for a rosette. Uh, it, uh, it, it's a different one than this, but I mean, it kind of shows you the, the process of it. What I'm gonna have to do now is uh, is the back where this mounts onto the post. Of course, the post is gonna be round and then there's gonna be three legs on it. And I didn't wanna to have to change the design of the leg, so I'm gonna dowel these legs to the post. That's the way it was on that old piece. And uh, and, and like I said, they, they wanted these legs, this shaped leg, so. Uh, and I didn't wanna to have to go through and figure out to cut a sliding dovetail on it. And, and the post is going to be kind of small. It's not, it's not a big table either. Uh, I think it's going to be about 32 inches. You know, <coughs> excuse me, around when I get done. Top of it will just, just come out to the feet. So, anyhow, instead of redesigning the thing, I'm just going to fix it. It's like the other one was. So, I'm going to put a couple of 5 8 dowels in here to attach it to the post. But we're going to have to, uh, going to have to, uh, Cut a, cut a groove down through there in it where it'll fit up against the post. Uh, uh, this one, see, it's already cut in it. So I've got to match this. Well, I've already got the, uh, I've already got the shaper set up with a, with a cutter on it. Right here's half. You can see half of the profile. When I cut it on that leg, uh, I'll cut half. And then I'll turn it over. I'll cut half. <clears throat> I'll cut half right here. And then I'll turn the leg over and I'll cut the other half. And that'll give us that. That'll give us that profile. Uh, I, I didn't have a bit to, to cut that profile, so I'm using a shaper cutter. I'm using this much of the of a shaper cutter for some crown molding. <laughs> so I got it set up. I, I might run it by there and and show it. Uh, May have to make this thing in two parts, two or three parts, I don't know, but anyhow, that's how we're gonna cut that out to fit there. Uh, but uh, let me 
Let me step over here and uh, carry the camera over here. This is this is what I really wanted to uh, to get in uh, in on the video here. Uh, make sure we're back out. Uh, Okay, I had a fella come in the shop the other day. Uh, I think it was just a day or two there before I before I had that second heart attack. Anyway, uh, he come in and uh, was looking around the shop and he said, "Wow, I can't believe that you even got one of those shop smith in here." And uh, I said, "What are you talking about? This is a good machine." And he said he'd come across two or three in his trading. He's always a trading and selling and buying tools and stuff. Anyways, he'd come across two or three in his trading that he'd, somebody'd give him and he'd give them away. And I said, well, Lord mercy, what was wrong with him? And he said, nothing. I said, well, you keep that in mind. The next time you somebody gives you one and don't want it, you just bring it on over here. I'll be more than happy to take it. But anyway, that got me thinking, uh, back to that debate about the shopsmith and it's worth in a shop. And I've read all kinds of things from people like them, didn't like them. Uh, me and Laney talked a little bit about the shopsmith and I showed him just a little bit about it. But I wanted to, uh, one of my favorite things about the shopsmith is the drill press portion of it. And here's why. Uh, of course, I've already got it set up. But this is the center post that I turned out. Uh, and it looks a little bit different too. I, uh, there's uh, there's places in the wood and it's it's done like that purposely so it can match some other furniture that uh, that's old. But nonetheless <clears throat> we had to have it uh, somewhat resemble what was there so that's the reason for the, des the design that's in it. Anyhow the bottom of it down here we got around and we're going to have to cut we're going to have to bore holes for the 5 8 dowel so we can dowel the legs on like uh, like the other piece was. Well on a normal drill press you'd have to build you something with a V, have to build some way to hold this round thing uh, where you can get it on there and cut it. On this shop smith, see you got the you got the table. This is the this, this table for the table saw and various other functions. But see, this thing tilts. I don't know how many of you ever ever saw one of these things in operation. If you've ever seen a demo, I guess they're always a demo and something about shop smith, what have you. But on the drill press, you take put your fence on here, tilt this thing up, and you've got a perfect V right here. You can adjust this way up and down and the, the angle. Anyway, you've got a you got a perfect place to lay a round piece of stock in here and bore a hole in it. Uh, I mean, you just do, you can't get this set up on a normal drill press. Uh, and, and it works great for, for this right here, among other things. But like I said, you know, this is, you got a big old table, and then I've got extensions on it. Uh, I can come out here, why, well, you know, a couple more feet with the, with the extensions I've got and bars for it, make the table even bigger for a drill press. But I just wanted to, uh, just wanted to touch on that, so I'm going to go ahead and bore these holes in this thing, and uh, then I'm going to convert it back over to my lathe and turn out some 5 8 hardwood dowels to put this uh, put these legs on this post. But uh, anyway, just want to run through that, and uh, uh, for for some folks that maybe heard of these things or never seen them in operation or never heard somebody talk about them honestly, you know, there's there's functions. I never use the table saw feature of this shop smith. Uh, the table is kind of small for a table table saw. Uh, on, in the one percent of the time that I might do it, I'll have me a a quarter inch dado blade set up in here. And uh, when I'm making a set of cabinets, if I got somebody helping me here, sometimes Dad and my uncle come and help me. So if there's two or three of us in the shop, there's probably somebody on the table saw. And maybe I've got a three-quarter dado head set up on the on the dado saw. So I might set up a quarter-inch dado cutter 
in this shop smith and, and have this to use to cut the grooves in my drawer sides and back and front uh, for the plywood for making drawers. Uh, once in a while I'll do that. It works really good for that. But beyond that, I don't ever use the table saw function of it much because I've got a big table saw. If you're cutting very big stock, the table saw is not, not very good because the table ain't that big. But the drill press, the lay, uh, I've seen some of you I saw some of the videos where I done some work with the bandsaw. I keep three sixteenths blade on the bandsaw that goes with this shop smith, and it works super for small stuff like that. And make them tight cuts and keep a small blade on this one, the big blade on my other one. So that works out great. This is my lay. Uh, I may have mentioned it before, but uh, I use this thing. This is the only lay I have, and it it works great. Uh, of course, it'd be nice to have a big old heavy duty. If I've done more turning, I, I don't do that much turning. Uh, uh, not that I don't like it, I just don't have that much call for it. And, uh, but I do have a duplicator that uh, works with this thing in the lay mode. So I can duplicate spindles and rails and what have you. Uh, and it works well. Uh, I've used it quite often. Uh, and it works really good. The only, the only complaint I've got about Shopsmith is what they cost and how much the accessories cost for them. Of course, it is made in USA tool and the quality of the thing is really good. Uh, of course, this one's several years old, but uh, the, the quality of it's great. And uh, if you get it set up and you can, uh, you can do some really precise work with it. Uh, it's just unique. You've got to learn how to use it. it uh, but uh, anyway, uh, not certainly not trying to talk anybody into buying a shopsmith, but it is an alternative, especially if you're, you know, if you're uh, kind of cramped and you don't have all the room that you'd like to have. Uh, you know, if you want to drill press and lay and saw and band saw, what have you, uh, you can uh, you can find them used and they make a good piece of equipment. Uh, they do for me. I know a lot of people don't like them, but. Uh, works good for me. So anyhow, just want to shoot a little on this, and I'll get these things done. And as I start to put it together, I'll make a little, make a little more video and show this table in completion. Uh, I just don't know how long it might take me to get it done. Okay, I, I couldn't resist. I had to come back in here with this one more thing right here. Uh, you know, I said we was going to put some some dowels. That's how we was going to attach the legs to their post here. So I've bored my board my holes for the dowels in the post. Now we're going to need to bore them in the legs. Of course, now I realize you could uh, you could probably fix you a jig on a regular drill press to bore these dowels with, but I just wanted to I just want to get a shot of this right here and uh, let's just see what was going on. Like I said, for people that never use one of these things, they don't know what they can do and. Uh, and so they, there's not many machines that you could take, a specialized machine maybe, uh, I'm not aware of any, you know, it's in, in a furniture factory or something like that. Uh, I guess some, some different kind of boring machines you could probably, could probably do this with. But anyhow, I'm set up right here. Of course, the, it's in a vertical mode. But that's the beauty of this thing. You could, you could lay it down and do it in a horizontal because it becomes a horizontal drill press. And the, and the thing would just lay on the table, you know. But I, I prefer to work here in the vertical. So, anyhow, this is the uh, this is the miter gauge that comes with the shopsmith, and and then it's got a uh, an adjustment right here in the center, so you can put that thing where you want it, and take your Allen wrench and, and lock it down, and it stays right there. It's just, it's just a stop that's made into the table like it is now. So we're using the fence to hold the bottom of the leg, and they're using the miter gauge up here in the slot. And that locates us right here for our uh, our first hole for our dowel. So we just put a stop here to hold it so you can bring it in and put the leg back where it goes each time. And let me, uh, let me pull the thing around here, maybe we can see. Get out of the way of it here. Uh, so you can kind of see what's going on right here. Uh, that, that, 
movable table and see the table goes in and out up and down if it was horizontal I mean if it's laying down but anyway you've got that adjustment once you get it located this way and you get it stood up here and then you can move the table and you get your adjustment that way you can get your your cut from your bit right centered up and uh, so we'll go ahead and cut one of those I've not got the depth set so I'll uh, I'll work that just a little bit as we go and uh, and cut the depth when I get it where I want it and then I'll set the stop on it so I can get them all the same. But anyhow, we are, I will mention too that uh, we measured the uh, measured the uh, holes here in the uh, in the center post and I want the bottom of the leg here even with the bottom of the post so that means they'll the bottom of the leg will go even with the post here and then they'll come up to right here so we got got our first measurement here and that's where we got our thing set up here so we'll do all three legs and then we'll then we'll uh, reset up and do this top one I won't run through all that I, I'll just go through this uh, this first thing right here and uh, we'll cut it and then I'll cut the rest of them Slow and easy, no rush. Don't want to change, take a chance on moving my stock. Looks pretty good. Uh, might get just a little more depth here. I think that'll be fine. Okay, now we'll go ahead and cut the other two legs in that position and then we'll relocate and we'll bore our other one up here. So just a, just a little more on how the shop smith works uh, for those that might be interested. Uh, and I, I know I'm not the only one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the only one that uses a, uh, that uses a shop smith. Uh, I'm not going to call any names. But you know you're out there because <laughs> we've talked about it. So uh, there's there's other people that use these things, and uh, uh, for those that don't like them, you know that's that's fine. Uh, they uh, they I guess they just don't fit into their workflow or whatever. And that's that's true with a lot of things. You know you might uh, you might use something that, you might use something that uh, uh, works great in your uh, in your workflow, but not somebody else's. So. No big deal. It, whatever it takes to get the job done is is what we use. That's the that's the best way to describe it. Anyway, Laney, I'm on the lookout for you, a cheap shopsmith, huh? <laughs> we we'll get you hooked up. Thanks for watching.